Hey YouTube, what's happening? When I first got my ATEM Mini Switcher, I was kind of confused by how keys work. So I thought I'd uh, do this tutorial to show you, um, clarify a bit about how uh, the, some of the terms in the ATEM Switcher are used, and that there's actually two kinds of keyers in the Luma Key section, one called I call Luma Key, and, but the other one called Alpha Key. And most people only talk about the Alpha Key, and I want to show you what Luma Key does and why it's helpful for you. So let's uh, switch to a simpler graphic. So this is a kind of classic uh, lower third that you can get lots of tutorials on YouTube about how to create. Let's look at the file itself. So this is a file that has transparency in it. That is, uh, it has each pixel not just red, green, and blue, but it also has another uh, pixel which tells you if it's transparent or not. And uh, you can see this in uh, Mac Preview. If you can't see those checkerboards in the transparent files, because it can be difficult to tell if something's really got transparency in it, so pick the show image background, and anywhere you see this checkerboard, that means that those pixels have been marked transparent. And anywhere that there isn't checkerboards, these are the ones that are opaque. You can also see it here in the has alpha channel. So if you have uh, a standard JPEG um, like this other one, you can see it doesn't have an uh, uh, alpha channel. And uh, I'll show you that in a sec. So how does this actually work? Well, if you look at how the keyer works, and this works both for the upstream and the downstream keyers, um, there is something called a key that fills in for the key source, and there's a content, which is the fill source. So fill is what you see, key is the thing that informs the keyer whether to use a pixel from the background image from the program bus, or whether to use a pixel from the graphic. And uh, we can actually look at that and see it right here. So this is what the keyer generates from that transparency file. So you saw that everywhere that was transparent has been turned into a black pixel, everything that wasn't transparent has been turned into a white pixel but that is only telling the keyer where to get the pixels from, whether it should take it from the program and see some fish, or whether it should take it from the key and show the graphic. So if I show, change the fill source back to the content, you see there's a key, and if I change the uh, source back to the, the background source, or the fill source, um, this is where uh, the background pixels will get replaced in the keyer. So this is an important thing that the keyer actually works not from transparency, but it turns it into some kind of mask, which we in the film industry would have called a mat, uh, but in video it's called the key source, because key helps determine which pixel comes from the background and which comes from the foreground. <clears throat> Let me contrast this with uh, something simpler, which is Luma King. So I'm calling this Alpha King because it's an alpha channel, but Alpha Alpha King can be complicated because you've got to create files with transparency. It's sometimes hard to play the transparency. It's sometimes hard to see it on screen. And so um, there's a much simpler technology called LumaKey that uses just black pixels as being transparent and white pixels being opaque. And let me show you what that looks like here. So let's switch to our LumaKey. And this is the first thing that I ran into. I said, whoa, that's weird. Where did my background pixel go? And that is because the way that the keyer works is there's a fill source and a key source. If there is no a key source, that is, there's no alpha channel in this file, then um, it does something kind of strange with it, which is it will just uh, assume that all those pixels are white. That is, there's no background image, it's only the graphic. So that's not very helpful for us if we're trying to do a king. Uh, so the trick to doing this is to change the key source to say, okay, there is no key source here. I want you to use the content itself as the key. And this gives you a really interesting effect. And this is truly what calls, is called Luma Key. Now the Luma Key looks slightly different, you'll see, because the, the white text is still white, but the blue and the red have kind of gone uh, semi-transparent now. Because this is, in Luma Key, you're literally adding two images together. And let me show you how that came about. In its kind of classic uh, white on black image, let me just show you that this is um, a black and white image. This is how uh, King was done in the 50s and 60s with analog television, because there really was an alternative. Uh, so they had one camera that pointed to an easel that had a black card on it with white text, and they had another camera pointing to the program content, and they literally added those two analog signals together. And because black is zero volts, anything plus zero remains unchanged, and so all the black pixels became transparent, and all the white pixels, white plus anything, still is white in video land, so the white pixels all became white, and that was the 
uh, simplest way to do overlay graphics. In fact, it, probably the only way in the early days of analog television, especially if it was live. And uh, so Luma King is quite old, and uh, but it still has some very nice uh, effects. For example, if we pick a different uh, picture here, you can. This is kind of reversed out, so the uh, letters and cells are black, and that means that they're transparent. So uh, you get the stencil effect, and that can be useful at sometimes. And you can also, uh, you know, that the alpha key channel isn't just black or white. It can have shades of gray. And what that shades of gray give you is that semi-transparency. So here's a gradient that goes from white down to black, and so uh, opaque down to, um, uh, to transparent, um, based just on the, uh, the brightness of, of, the, of the pixels, turns into transparency for the keyer. Now the keyer will take whatever your key source is, and it will calculate the luminance of it, and use that to key. So you don't have to be limited to just uh, black and white files. You can put color in there, and you get the same result because um, yellow is close to white and blue is close to black, so I can use yellow and blue. The keyer still calculates them based on their luminance, not their color, and I can uh, now have color in a Luma key, which is uh, something that's uh, a bit novel. So it turns out that this uh, this image is actually has an alpha channel, so that I can go back to um, a full alpha channel key, and that's the only way to get black text if you want. Uh, it was impossible, of course, to get black knockout. The things you had to do in the film world or the video world to get black text on anything was really complicated. So it's really nice to have alpha keys, but it's also really nice to know the difference between them. And I hope this tutorial has helped you understand the difference between Luma key and alpha keys in the A10 Mini.